Hi guys, Josh from Shizen Style. Photographing the essence of a tree can usually go in two different directions. You can either capture stillness or you can capture a dramatic scene. In this video, I'll give you a few tips of mine for photographing trees. I've been influenced by all of the woodlands that I've grown up with exploring in the northeast part of the U.S. And then to contrast that with many of the mountains and ocean coasts in Japan that I've explored. I've come to really appreciate the resilience and beauty that trees develop as they grow and survive the sometimes harsh conditions of mother nature. To get right into some of the tips, I'm always looking for trees with a unique shape or that have been naturally weathered. These types of trees provide inspiration for a Japanese garden design or a Japanese style pruning. These are the natural trees that bonsai aficionados strive for. Sometimes in a woodland forest though, it's more subtle than that. Just a small curve amongst the straight growing trees. I'm always trying to be aware of what's around me and not to be so stuck on wildly sculpted trees. I could miss the beauty and the mundane if I'm too focused on the exotic. The next thing to keep in mind is don't forget about the beautiful trees that thrive outside the forest too. I'm always looking for urban trees that provide that bit of nature to the many people who don't have regular access to deep forests and mountains. The connection to nature and stress relief that these sometimes lone trees provide to a number of people is maybe even closer to the meaning of Shizen, where nature is brought into our daily modern lives. But another thing to focus on is the details. The photo sometimes is only the base of the tree, sometimes a close-up of the bark, and sometimes it's a shot up in the air with the sky as a backdrop. Don't think you need to capture the entire tree. Another tip is to focus on the light. Early morning, evening, late at night, they all provide a different atmosphere for highlighting a tree. Forget about the colors and focus on the luminance. This is something that Alistair Ben really goes deep into and I'm a huge fan of his. I'll link his channel in the description below, uh, but I highly recommend checking out his expressive photography approach. On the theme of light, you can also look for a backlit tree that can create a great silhouette. These can be great black and white shots as well as with the contrast of light and dark. This shot here, for example, I think I'd really like to try it at different times of day. Uh, you can sort of see the light hitting it and it's really, it's really nice. This in a black and white, or maybe I'll try this at nighttime where you get more luminance rather than actual uh, sunlight bursting down on it. I'm a little bit farther away, but this is with a 90 millimeter, one of my favorite lenses. Uh, the Sony 90 millimeter is the macro as well. I can get close up on some of the flowers and leaves and things like that in nature, as well as hit a little bit more of a framed in focus shot rather than the expansive wilderness, which admittedly can be a little chaotic, especially in like woodland gardens. This is, uh, this is in my yard, I guess you would call it. We have about nine acres here of wooded property and it's got some small mountains and a creek running through it. So it really provides this great uh, environment for me to come back out and 
explore seeing different perspectives of the same trees that I've seen many times, but different times of day, different seasons, always looking to see how to capture a particular tree uh, in a different way. Look for atmospheric shots that create a depth of field. This is most easily done with fog, which I love to shoot in. But you can also use a lower f-stop and blur the background a little, bringing the focus into a particular tree and shape. Right now we're in the midst of the beginning of summer, so fog is a little hit and miss. Uh, autumn, perfect time. But you need to train yourself not to rely on fog, but to search for ways of creating that atmospheric depth uh, any time of the year. Solo trees off in the distance make for great wide angle shots that embrace the feeling of solitude. It tends to become a minimalist shot where simplicity is the key. Black and white shots are also great for these type of lonely trees in the distance. Solitude and serenity fit perfectly with the Japanese aesthetic notions of wabi-sabi and yugen. I have to mention autumn and especially Japan's affinity for the maple tree. In Japan, Japanese maples, even very large ones, tend to have smaller leaves which provide a very different feeling than our red maples here in New England, for example. Even after the leaves are gone though, maple tree trunks and branches provide some beautiful shapes to shoot. Another tip is to look for different color trees. Different color trees can also really pop and provide an interesting photo with something like a pine tree backdrop that has that solid evergreen uh, color that highlights anything in front of it, really. Ginkgo trees that stand out bright yellow in autumn are also a really beautiful shot. A place that often has some great trees to photograph is in a Japanese garden. This is where human creativity meets nature. And if you'd like to explore some of the unique aspects of photographing Japanese gardens, then you should check out the following video.